So good to see some of you who are here. Well, all of you who are here this evening. <laughs> that there are people here this evening, I think is what I was trying to say. <laughs> I'm glad I looked at everyone as I was saying that. And welcome to those of you who are joining us for our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science via Zoom or Facebook Live. This is actually a time for our pre-service meditation and 
We're using the God's the love that I am chant that you'll be hearing in a few moments. And so I just invite you to get still, to close your eyes. And you may opt to either sing along with the chant and use that as your object of focus, or you can just listen to the words, God's the love that I am. And if your mind wanders, just notice, just notice where it went. And then without judgment, very lovingly, just bring your awareness back to the chant. God's the love that I am.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your body, noticing your surroundings. You may want to wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, just open your eyes. So once again, welcome to all of you who are here in person and to those of you who may have joined us during the meditation on Zoom and Facebook Live. We're so glad to have you with us here this evening. Let's begin our service, as we always do, with our opening chant led by our wonderful Sam Krieger and Darius Lux. <laughs> Let's know that truth at a deeper level. As we come together in this moment, just turning our attention inward once again, knowing that indeed God is in this place because God is everywhere. That truly there's only one life, one real power. That life, that power is infinite love, infinite intelligence, infinite creativity, infinite goodness in every way can be known, felt, imagined, or realized. And that one is forever impelling itself into this dimension of time and space. And so I know that each and every one of us exists as an expression of that one life of God filled with God's nature. And I know that that vibration of God's love is tangibly felt throughout our time together this evening. We feel that vibration of love as that sense of connectedness as a community, the love of all of those who are of service this evening. I know that we feel that vibration of love and inspiration flowing through Sam and Darius this evening, through the music. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect message of God that is spoken through our beloved practitioner, Daryl Gurney, this evening. I know that Daryl is that channel through which God speaks to our hearts and minds that we hear the message we need to hear to remember the truth of who we are as emanations of the divine, to experience that divine nature more fully. And so I give thanks right in this moment for all the blessings we receive during this time together this evening, knowing it's all of God, God unfolding. I say thank you, God, 
Thank you, love. Thank you, life. And I release this word knowing it is so. Our time is blessed, and so it is. And together we say, amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good evening. Um, I don't know if y'all know this, but I've been a practitioner in the background of this service for 12 years. 
I've been writing the blurbs for Reverend Mark so that if you've ever read any of the blurbs that prompted you to come here on a Wednesday night, that was me in the background. So it's an honor to be here in the foreground tonight and have an opportunity to speak a few words with you. And if you're on Zoom, I want to say welcome. Uh, I've been exactly where you are for the last year and a half. This is my first time back in the sanctuary. So, so um, tonight I'd like to celebrate perfection with you. Anyone interested in that? Wow, interesting. Not a lot of hands going up. Okay. Okay, so what do I mean by perfection? I mean perfect. You're perfect. Life is perfect. My life's perfect. Your life's perfect. The world is perfect. Now, a lot of hands didn't go up when I asked that, and maybe that's because it's something to really consider, because if you're going to stand in and celebrate perfection, you have to be willing to give up your reasons, evidence, arguments, to the contrary, right? Right? And there's a lot of that. You know, some of you might be saying in your head right now, he's talking about perfection. Has he seen the news recently? Has he seen my bank account recently? You know, does he know what's going on with me health-wise recently? Well, first, before we can even have this conversation, let's first agree that we gather together here in this community to practice spiritual principles, right? outside of the everyday kind of default way of human thinking. Yes, we are humans having a human experience, and yet we grow ourselves here to stand in our spiritual beingness outside of just being human, right? So one of the ideas that we learn here, and it's actually mentioned in the Bible in John 7, 24, is that we don't judge by appearances, but we judge by right judgment, righteous judgment. So in inviting you to celebrate perfection tonight, I'm going to invite you to step beyond any appearances to the contrary in your life right now. What's going on, what's gone on in the past in your life, and actually stand. Like right now, I'm not going to ask you to stand, okay? But I'd like if you're in the sanctuary or if you're at home on Zoom, actually stomp both, both feet. Just stump as a symbol of standing just for tonight inside of perfection. Because if you can join me there first, I promise to give you evidence to back up your stand, right? But it, and here's the funny thing it actually takes your willingness to stand there first and look out from perfection to be able to see that evidence. Otherwise, you're just going to, you know, your argumentative mind will shoot holes in everything that I offer tonight. So, how many of you are actually willing to stand in perfection and celebrate perfection here tonight? Great, I almost got all the hands up that time. Now, I'll just offer for any of you, or if you're on Zoom and you still have some reservations, I will let you have your excuses and your reasons and your evidence and your arguments at the end of the evening if you like. Okay, they'll be at the back of the sanctuary. You can pick them up, take them with you, or you can just leave them and they'll get cleaned out with the sanctuary. Okay, so if you'll join me in standing in perfection, my topic tonight is what appeared to be for evil, God meant for my awesomeness. So I'd like you actually to repeat that. If you can do that at home as well, just close your eyes for a moment and just repeat after me. What appeared to be for evil, God meant for my awesomeness. That's pretty good. Let's do that one more time. What appeared to be for evil, God meant for my awesomeness. Now, standing in perfection, that feels pretty good, right? But before your BS detector comes out and you start shooting holes in all of this, let's start doing some evidentiary exploration, okay? So evidentiary means kind of like what investigators or lawyers do. Let's find evidence for this, okay? 
And first, let me just precede this with acknowledging there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. There's a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy stuff going on. And it's hard for us necessarily to be able to, you know, this isn't some Pollyanna idea that it's all perfect. But what I would invite you to do with me tonight is to the degree that we can find the perfection in our own experience of life, then we can become bastions in which perfection can emanate out into the world. So are you willing to play with me in that way tonight? Yeah, Yeah? thank you. So let's start our evidence with a little story from the Bible. There's this story in Genesis about Joseph. Now, a lot of you know the story, but I'm just going to run through it real quick. Joseph was one of Jacob's 12 sons. And supposedly his father loved him more than the others. Now, does any of that sound like seemingly, supposedly sibling stuff anybody's experienced in their own life, right? You know, Dr. Mark always tells us the Bible is just a story, you know, that we see our own lives in. So anyhow, Joseph was one of of Jacob's 12 sons. Supposedly his father loved him more, so his brothers were jealous of him, and they sold him into slavery. And he was taken to Egypt. He eventually became the steward to one of Pharaoh's officials. And this uh, official's wife tried to seduce him, and he held strong, but he eventually had a lot of accusations put upon him, and he was put in prison. So just from that little bit right there, we can already see that Joseph has a lot of evil seemingly coming at him, right? But again, let's stand in our spiritual principles of the philosophy we stand in here, okay? in the sense that we believe here that evil is just the absence of love, right? There's no is evil, there's simply the absence of love. And if all there is in God's one universe is love, all that evil is is, is, is the absence of that. And, and while we're dealing with it, let's talk about sin. So in the original Aramaic, sin was simply missing the mark. So again, you know, evil and sin is thrown, uh, thrown around out there, but we want to stand in our spiritual principles around that. So if you consider that love is this target and you have an arrow and you're 50 feet away and you just missed it, that's all sin and evil is in our philosophy, okay? But back to Joseph, who seems to be a victim of evil and sin, a lot of it coming at him. While he's in prison, he somehow gets to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. So now he's got this really cool, cushy relationship with Pharaoh, and he gets made the governor of Egypt just in time to ration all of the, 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 the harvest in Egypt for a coming famine. So he steps into governor role just in time to ration that out. Now, here's where it all comes back around, you know, just like life. During the famine, Jacob's sons, his 11 brothers, come to Egypt. They've heard about this governor guy, and they want to ask him for some supplies. Now, they don't initially recognize him, but he identifies himself to them, And he actually invites them and to go get their father and all come and live with him in Egypt. And he actually says, and I quote, You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Now, what does this wonderful story of Joseph's end run around sin and evil have to do with us? And by the way, an end run is in football where a blocker kind of avoids all the tacklers, right? It's, it's, it's just a phrase for how we can overcome a difficulty without confronting it directly. What does it have to do with us? I dare say that Joseph is not the only one who has had an experience of evil and sin coming at them, right? So he's not the only one who seems to be justified and duly deserving of victimhood. All of us have that opportunity. Get out on the freeway, you're going to have a hundred opportunities to be a victim. You know, go shopping, get out in the world with people, stuff's going to happen. You'll have an opportunity to be a victim. Even sitting at home by yourself 
with your negativity, bias, and judgment launching at you, you have an opportunity to be a victim all by yourself. So here's the thing, though. I say that <clears throat> if we, if while standing in this principle of perfection, we can always do an end run around evil and sin as well if we take on all good. Now, when I say all good, I don't mean a spiritual bypass all good. A lot of times in spiritual communities, you'll have people who will say, oh, it's all good, or I'm too blessed to be stressed. Now, that's nice, but a lot of times that's maybe a way of avoiding doing the deeper inner oneness spiritual work, right? But if we do that spiritual work, of knowing all good, to support our chosen stance of perfection, then we can really claim, based on the evidence that we then see, that it really is all good. But remember, we got to stand in perfection first. <clears throat> so let me give you an example, and then I'm going to ask you to find <clears throat> an example in your own life. So I have a book coming out in January, and it's all about individuals like you and me taking spiritual co-pilot control over our lives and where we're going with them. And I believe that there's ways that we can shed the weight of past and present victimhood so that we can actually fly higher. <clears throat> the book is entitled The Back 40, Seven Essential Embraces to Launch Life's Radical Second Half. And it purports that the first 40, 50, or 60 years of our life is simply R&D, research and development for who we actually came here to be and what we actually came here to do. And that all of our experiences in that first half of life are simply shaping and grooming mechanisms if we interpret what we're to see out of them. <clears throat> and here's the question. What if your biggest self-expression, and I mean the big S, you know, all of us know the little S self, you know, that sniveling, complaining, kind of whining, you know, part of us that complains that the world won't make us happy. But I'm talking about the big S self, that part of us that all of us, you know, sense something bigger that can use us and move through us. What if your big S S self-expression is still to come, no matter what you've been through. So one of the exercises in the book gives readers an opportunity to do an end run, kind of Joseph end run around victimhood. And look, even though we pride ourselves in this community of, you know, standing in spiritual principle, believe me, we all can sing that victim song, Right? Now, in the book, the first two embraces, and embrace, by the way, means holding lovingly in your arms. The first two embraces are your past and your present. And I propose that when we, we can claim complete ownership of every seeming awful thing that's ever happened to us in the past or every seeming awful thing that might be going on right now, then we have set ourselves up to effectively, spiritually co-pilot ourselves in the future. There's something about owning all of our life that allows us to have more of a say on where we're going. So here's a <clears throat> condensed story I tell in the book of some evil that I faced. The mother of my son and I went through a half million dollar custody suit about 20 years ago. So um, we used to all live on the west side of Los Angeles, and my son's mom moved up to Glendale and wanted to have full custody of our son. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole victim uh, quagmire that I went in, save to say, though, that I was down for the count for a couple years in court and a decade or more kind of just recovering from the whole victim ordeal. And look... That's just my story, right? Each of you has something in your own life that 
as much as you've tried and as much as we've, you know, tried to move beyond it, you have very good grounds for claiming victimhood, okay? So I just want you to look from, from your story as well. Um, what I can offer, though, is that the whole victim side of the experience transformed when standing in perfection and looking at life as simply R&D, research and development, looking, actually even looking at this whole experience like I was a lab rat in some laboratory experiment that was all about me discovering who I came here to be, what I came here to do. You know, what do they create in, in, in laboratories? They create formulas, right? So what if it was all to give me a formula for self-expression? So there's a, there's a pretty detailed process in the book, but I'm going to simplify it in a couple points here tonight. One point was taking an inventory of the blessings. And this takes your, especially when you feel pretty darn justified in being a victim, to turn the mind towards finding blessings takes some effort. But guess what? It doesn't take any effort to be a victim, right? So in looking at the blessings, some of them that came out of this is that the storm created a subsequent peaceful co-parenting world because in the process of this custody suit, we both, both learned enormously about our respective contributions to our son, as well as learned about ourselves. The process also awakened an awareness within me of the reckonings of the trails that I had left behind in terms of relationships with others. So it actually magnified for me the critical importance of keeping those trails as clean as possible as I move forward in life. There was a psych evaluation that went on. Both of us had to see a psychologist. And it really actually had me look deeper into the thinly veiled dearth of self-esteem that I actually operated from at that time. The debt had me examine the un underlying spiritual issues surrounding debt and money and abundance, things like forgiveness integrity, worthiness, regrets, all of that involved around money. Now, the whole experience was actually at the source of this idea, the back 40. It actually came to me in a spiritual and mental download when I was in one of my times of greatest despair. But lastly, but no less important, the whole situation had me move up to Glendale. This was back in 2005 so that I could be a co-parenting, you know, involved with my son. And guess what? I found North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So here's the thing. All of us can find blessings. We're trained that way here in the philosophy that we entertain. Here's, there's a kicker here, though. There's, a, there's another aspect to the story. Besides the blessings that I found, I was able to see myself stepping into more of a spiritual co-piloting of my life because I saw that this whole experience pointed to me becoming more of who I actually came here to be and doing more of what I came here to do. So again, as I said, I looked at myself as a lab rat and the formula out of this laboratory experiment, I called it self-expression directives. Like where was I to go forward? What were my directives in living life forward? They'll sound simple, but they're actually pretty profound. What I saw was, number one, authenticity. That there was a whole other world available for me as I tapped into more authenticity. Number two, humility. Number three, wake up and listen to the universe. A lot of times we have to have big two by fours or bricks Hit us a side of the head for us to actually do that. Well, this was an opportunity for me to learn that. And also, it had me learn to do my best and never give up. And I call these self-expression directive, directives because I saw that this whole event was really about me becoming more of that. 
Now, some of you may say, okay, well, that's great that you found your blessings and your self-expression directives out of that, but you ain't got no idea what I got going on, or you have no idea what they did to me. And here's, here's the point. To the degree that you're committed to not finding blessings and not finding a perfect directional pattern for you out of whatever's happened will be the length of time you remain a victim to it. And what I say and what I want to offer is, is that that weighs us down from flying forward into that greater self-expression that we all have. And due to this process of finding the blessings and then looking to see how it shaped me for my good and, and for my greater self-expression, I can actually now thank my son's mom for this as being the best thing that ever happened to me. And I don't say that lightly, and this is not making lemonade out of lemons. But what I want to offer is that when we can really stand in these things as the best thing that ever happened to us, then there is a place to stand in moving our life forward because we are not a victim to what has occurred. And we can take what life is giving us and discern from it how we become more and more of who we came here to be. So what I'd like us to do right now is let's just take this home where it really counts. So if you, if you would join me and if you're at home, if you can just close your eyes and if you're in the sanctuary, if you can... We can just go within and take a deep breath and just be centered here in our body. And just taking a moment to allow whatever that darkest thing is, that thing that perhaps we've been carrying for so many years and have convinced everyone that we know of the story of how we were wronged. That whatever's going in on in our body right now, our health, whatever's going on in our finances, and we take whatever that is that we could so, so, so justifiably find evidence and gain agreement that has us as a victim and simply open ourselves up. Open ourselves up by standing in perfection. Standing in that there is something here to be discerned. And by taking a moment to even look for one blessing, to allow that there could even be one blessing that has come out of this, that simply starts the direction. It has us go in a different direction than we've gone before. And if we're willing to let this experience be something that expands us versus contracts us, our life was not given incidences and experiences to limit us, but given us experiences and laboratory experiments to give us direction for greater and greater expansion. So I just take a moment right now to give thanks for the opportunity to stand in oneness, to stand in knowing that there are not perpetrators and victims, that there are not good guys and bad guys but that there is only one life going on. It is the life of God. It is the life of perfection. It is the life of love. And I speak a word for right here and right now, knowing that everyone in earshot of this message is even right now developing the courage to take a different stance, to tell a different story, to actually build momentum towards their life as having been perfect, to give them what they needed to do what they came here to do. 
I just speak a word knowing that all is good, all is God, and that this message percolates even beyond tonight, that over the next day, week, month, that remembrance of looking for the blessings and looking for the perfection in all of life as it's occurring so that we really do get to be who we came here to be. We get to do what we came here to do. We get to expand and have life more abundantly. For this and so much more, I give thanks. I give thanks, I give thanks for the opportunity to live this magnificent, awesome life. And I simply allow it to be saying, and so it is, amen. Thank you, Darius and Sam. And Daryl, thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad you did all that R&D to give us that message. <laughs> so this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. And uh, for those of you here in the sanctuary, uh, you're able to drop off your donations as you exit in the foyer. We'll have a box there to collect the donations. For those of you who are watching online, so the different ways you can give. One, uh, you can call the church office up to 15 minutes after service. We can take your donation over the phone via credit or debit card. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page to make a one-time or set up recurring payments. And you can also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. With that, let's all just feel that energy, the joy of giving as we hold our gifts to our hearts and we say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you.
triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Rest in God and say Amen. Mm. Ah, let's just rest in God for a moment. <laughs> feel so good. So as we bring our service to a close, uh, first, for those of you who did not have a chance to meet our beloved Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen, who will be, oh yes you are, <laughs> who will be uh, officially starting on September 1st, but already bringing her awesome energy. Uh, Sydney, please stand up. <laughs> So nice to have you here with us this evening. Um, thank you to all of those who have been of service this evening. Let me start out there in virtual land. Uh, to our practitioners who are holding vigil, thank you, Christine Crawford and Bob Lyon, for Facebook Live support. Practitioner Liz Racy, thank you so much. To Zoom support, Barbara Berg, who is our North Hollywood Church host tonight, Jim Reimers and Dean Regan, who are our Zoom hosts, and Brenda Jordan, our Zoom associate. And here in the sanctuary, thank you, first of all, to Colleen. Are you, I know you're back there somewhere. There you are, <laughs> who is here to greet us and usher us in this evening and is helping with the collection. Thank you, Adam, as always, for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To all of our wonderful media team, Doreen, Blair, Nikki, who's on camera two here. Our musical support, thank you once again, Darius and Sam. And again, Daryl, for that wonderful, wonderful talk. And to all of you who are here and who have joined us virtually, um, just want to let you know, if you'd like to get some more of Darius' uh, inspiring music, DariusLux.com. Uh, donations, again, over the phone, quick reminder, call the church office, 818-762-7566. I'm going to be one of those people that <laughs> runs those <laughs> telethons, right? I'm getting my practice. <laughs> NHCRS.org forward slash give or text the word give to 818-457-3419. And a reminder that if you join uh, Amazon Smile and designate us as a recipient of donations, that every purchase you make on Amazon, we get uh, a donation here to the church. Uh, prayer with a practitioner is available via Zoom after service, and we have some practitioners here in the sanctuary. If any of you would like prayer after service, just please come forward so uh, we can pray with you. You can email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office 818-762-7566, and uh, option four on the phone menu allows you to leave a uh, voicemail message. So we check those messages and emails every evening, and the prayer requests are sent out to all of our practitioners. Also, uh, Daryl made a reference to his book, The Back 40, that's coming out. If you wanted to know more about that, uh, you can get more information at the back 40 written out f o r t y dot com forward slash free we all remember that last word right free the back 40 forward slash <laughs> free and uh, dot com pardon forward slash free and you can get more information and uh, learn more about your awesomeness Wednesday evening next week, we have our bi-monthly Teze service. So uh, that's next Wednesday, September 1st. Meditation, as usual, starts at 6.50. Service starts at 7 p.m. If you've not attended, I think almost everyone I'm seeing here in the sanctuary has attended the Teze service, but it's uh, an evening of chants and meditation and readings led by our wonderful practitioner with a golden voice, Joanne O'Brien. 
Um, it's really a special experience, and I'm always honored to join Joanne for that experience. So please join us for that. Reminder that our youth church is now open, and we're so well, uh, excited to be welcoming our youth back. So uh, if you haven't been able to attend our 9.45 a.m. service because you didn't know what to do with the kids, bring the kids, and uh, we'll be there. And um, we were saying that if you had children under three, to bring them into mommy, daddy, and me room, but I know Andrea has been checking every Sunday to see if there are any toddlers, uh, so we do have someone to watch over them as well. Um, a reminder, too, that we'll be having a celebration of life for our beloved Mary Jane Hendry, uh, who's been a member, I think she was a member of the church before I even started coming here, and that's a long time ago. Um, that will be on Saturday, September 4th. Uh, so that's a week from this Saturday at 2 p.m. here in the sanctuary and also on Zoom. And you can get the information on the Zoom link on our website. Um, we're also inviting people to join in the fun. We're looking for people to help host our services on Facebook Live. So if you have any experience with Facebook Live, uh, Facebook at all, if you're interested, just want to find out more about that, um, it's relatively easy. It's not nearly as intricate for those of you who have been somewhat exposed to all the steps we go through for Zoom. I think uh, the Facebook Live is uh, simpler, and if you're interested, just call the church office. Terry Prince will be delighted to uh, take your name and get you in touch with people who can tell you more about that. Uh, Terry's at extension 206, by the way. Zoom virtual patio before and after all of our services to connect with our congregants, fellow congregants. If you're still joining us virtually, men's group meets every Sunday, 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome, and we continue to meditate together. I know some of us are on almost every morning, Monday through Saturday, um, except I get to see you here, Brenda. I like that. Brenda usually joins by phone. <laughs> uh, but it's really a great experience and bonding experience. Uh, again, that's 8 to 8.15, Monday through Saturday. The link is on our website. So to get more information on any of this that I've just told you about or anything else that's going on here at North Hollywood, nhcrs.org, and uh, just check out all the different links. With that, I'm going to invite... Daryl to come up once again uh, to give us our benediction, and then Darius will close us out with our chant. Thank you again for being with us. <laughs> so just taking a moment to actually choose to stand in our awesomeness, not out of ego, but out of simply humble, standing in the truth of our life, the life of God that we get to live individually as a unique emanation of that one life, knowing that every other life, that every situation, event, circumstance that we ever encounter is all for our highest and greatest good. We just give thanks for life. We give thanks for this community where we get to celebrate the truth of oneness, the truth of perfection, the truth of love, and that we get to be individuals, meaning unseparated from the whole, individuals in the oneness of God, sharing and emanating love, peace, joy, harmony goodness. For this and so much more, I give thanks. I give thanks for this service. I give thanks for the words spoken. I give word, thanks for the words heard. I give thanks for the energy surrounding this church. And for this and so much more, I release this word, allowing it to go forth and multiply in abundance and awesomeness. And so it is. Amen.
we ready.